Hebrews 13, verse 5 through 16. Therefore, by him let us con continually uh, offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Thank you, Tess. Am I on? Yep, I think it is. All right. Good morning to you all. Um, where is Randy at? There he is. Randy, thank you for our discussion we had last Sabbath on this small groups. It's kind of helped me correct my course. So let's have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you that we can meet today. Thank you for those people that you brought. Help us understand what love sharing is all about that will help this church here in Nevada, Iowa. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Love sharing. That's number 13. Love sharing gives priority to relationships. Building relationships is so important. But how many relationships do you have in this church that you consider people are close friends? Do you have very many? I'm looking. Randy's looking at his wife. You know, you two look almost like sisters, Patty. So you are close. I think you've got a good relationship. Not sure where Randy's at. He's a little farther away from his wife, so I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, don't realize. Now, I want you to catch this one. This is where I'm going to focus my talk today, and this is where I want you to focus. In my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. That's the first point. And pray and seek my face and turn toward from their wicked ways. Then I will hear, that's the second point. I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins. And lastly, I will heal their land. Now, you notice that there are three H's here. I want you to catch this in one verse. Humble themselves. Hear, God will hear us. And lastly, he'll heal us. They, they come in logical order, don't they? In other words, you won't get healing unless you humble yourself you see that and you won't hear god won't hear you unless you humble yourself so first of all we'll humble himself then he'll hear us then he'll heal us see that so we're going to talk those are going to be the three points that we're going to talk about today now what i'm going to do is talk to you more but if you have a comment you may make it so, because this is the discussion. So, first thing we're going to look at humble. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am lowly, gentle, and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, I want you to notice this new King James, new international version. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and what? Humble, and you will find rest for your soul. What's humility? What's it mean to be humble? First discussion. What's it mean to be humble? Do you humble your wife, Randy? Or do your wife humble you? Occasionally. My wife does the same. Humble, what does humble mean? It means surrendering, submitting before God. That's what it's saying. Now notice what Jesus has done. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself. 
and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Submitting for us. Let nothing be done to selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. I want you to catch that, but be humble. I'm going to back up one here, but I want you to see that word lowliness is humble. And how do you humble yourself? Let each esteem each other better than themselves. So important to find out what the interests of others are rather than you being in your own interest to somebody else. That turns people off. Isn't that right, Nathan? I just, you're learning that, aren't you? That's one thing I've learned through the ministry. But I never used to be that way. I want you catching this different translation here. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Humble means thinking of others as better than yourselves. That's humility. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take interest in others too. How many of you people are interested more in what you do than what you want God, God wants you to do? That's why, Randy, we don't see many people in God's church. I'm being a little tough on you, but I'll, be, I'll smooth her out. If we would humble ourselves before God and be kind and courteous, tenderhearted and pitiful, there would be 100 conversions to the truth. Or there's now only one. Humility. Humble. Same passage, another passage. Why do we not learn of the Savior every day? Why do we not live in constant communion with him so that we can, so that in our connection with one another, we can speak and act kindly and courteously? Wouldn't that be nice? It's a beautiful thing for our church to look at. Same passage, same page. Why do we not honor the Lord by manifesting tenderness and love for one another? If we speak and act in harmony with these principles of heaven, unbelievers will be drawn to Christ by association with us. Did you catch the impact of that statement? We were just talking today, weren't we, Nathan, that a lot of times there are certain pastors that come that have an agenda that they want to tell what you want to do. But we should not have agendas. We should find out what the Holy Spirit wants from each from them and move upon what they're asking, not what we think they ought to know. See, most of us Adventists say, what they don't have, what they, it's different from us, is we gotta tell them about the Sabbath. Never tell people about the Sabbath unless they're converted heart, unless they know Jesus. I like what his statement is. Sometimes we are more concerned about being right than being loving. Doesn't that strike you? Strikes me. I'm, I'm with you guys. Here's how the Savior works. The Savior will mingle with men as one as this is message, uh, ministry of healing, page 143. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He mingled. Shows sympathy for them. Ministered to their needs. Won their confidence. And then said, follow me. Now, here's what we do in evangelism. Oh, people, we, we form a relationship. And this, I've been back up. I got back up. Jesus demonstrated this relationship with me. He demonstrated his love, got to know them, and listen. We'll talk, look at that later. He listened to them, and he got close to them. That's how you move. Here's how we work. Now, this is how evangelism work. It's interesting. We send brochures. Randy didn't like this one. But I'll modify that, Randy. We ask them to come where we are. Isn't that right? We teach them the truth. And we said, follow it. Just think about that. Now, what Randy's told me, 
they do in Florida, and we're going to talk about that, Randy, is where do we put most of our effort? Most of our efforts seem to be pushed in, the, in that we think the brochure is going to win. Brochures do bring people, but how we treat those people is so important. All right, here's a series of second point here. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Point two. Correcting our course. We have allowed ourselves to become expert in spreading information instead of experts in what? Interesting, isn't it? But people are crying for someone to listen. Listen. Someone to wipe a tear. Someone to cool a burning brow. That's what people are looking for. Listening. At college, I learned from, this is your Anderson. He was a principal, but he went into psychology. He was very good what he was doing. He must have used that in Midwood, principal. But if he said that most people can get over whatever they have by just someone listening to them. Do you know that? The best skill you can have is listen. What do I say? Well, you say what they're asking. The vast majority of people in the United States will not care how much we know until they know how much we care. It's true. Ministry of Healing. Many have no faith in God, but I have a confidence, a lost confidence in man. But notice this. But they appreciate acts of sympathy and what? Come with us. That's how you reach people. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving, loving, lovable Christian. Strongest argument, ministry of healing. She also says, men will believe not what the minister preaches. So you're going to forget what I say, but what the church lives. Now, great knowledge. Before 1950s, American society was strong on relationships, but starting for information. Guess what today is? Today, society today needs just the opposite. People are flooded for, with information, but starving for relationships. Why? Because they're playing computer games or watching things on television, right? No communication. That's what's drawing our people today, young people. Who cares about love? He writes, this, there's a, several writers here. As strange as it seems to us in the 20th century, the most rapid growth of the church occurred long before modern adventures of media. There was no television, no radio, no printed page. The first century's evangels just had one media for communicating the good news, that's love, with the word. We have to, use, we have to know how to use the word of God in a loving way, not in a correcting way demeaning way. A survey of recent converts to Adventism said that 65, 67% of people become some of them as primarily to relationships with friends and relatives. That is so true. I spent 43 in the ministries and 75 to 80% of the people that I brought in was what the members brought in. Not what meetings do. Besides, when you have meetings, we aren't even relating to people. You know that? We aren't even connecting with them, but connection is so important. Isn't that right, Nathan? Connecting. The remaining percentage are scattered in much smaller amounts from programs, pastors, Sabbath schools, 
seminars, radio, TV, and so on. A man who has friends must be himself be friendly. Do you believe that? That's Proverbs. Proverbs. To be a friend may involve listening to neighbors' troubles or participating with him in non-religious activities that are mutually and socially uh, interest, mutual interest sociably. Did you see that one? That is so true. There's a lot of things happening in this church. I know that. I even like our 4th of July thing, Arlene, now it's your spot. That's a good thing. It means actively seeking opportunities by, to show love by running errands for someone, babysitting, performing other mundane but practical service to demonstrate Christ's love. If we are committed our time to the Holy Spirit, to the Lord, the Holy Spirit will, in his time, give natural opportunity to speak about the Savior. I found that so true. Love relationships, building, love sharing is built on relationships, making contact with non adverse becomes an ongoing process, not a spring or fall event. Ongoing. I like this story here. You get it, you elders, you get this. And I got it all the time. Districts I come into, they always say this. I hardly begin pastoring my new, this is the author, Kim Johnson. I hardly begin pastoring my new district when one of my local elders said, the church hasn't had any baptisms for quite a while. We've heard that, haven't we? Jessica, you've heard that. So I think we ought to have an evangelist. And, uh, and, here's, and have some meetings. So the pastor said, well, how many non amnesties do you have? I don't like that word non amnesties but anyway, that's what he put in. Do you folks have currently come into this church? How many guests, we would say? That's a better one, non amnesties He didn't think, he didn't think of one. Well, how many close non amateur friends do you think you have? Your members have? Uh, I did not think that they, there were any of those either. Couldn't think of any. I got to be careful what I'm saying up here because I can just unravel. I have elders that think that their job is to stand by the door, make sure no corrupt person gets in here. Do you know that? I wonder if he's not one of them. Anyway, one of those sailors. Well, how many Bible studies are members given at present? I love this one. Oh, I think the previous pastors had a few. No plowing, no planting, no weeding, no watering. So bring in the reapers. Any farmer could have told him such things was unworkable. Healthy churches should have people flowing through them all year long. Healthy. In farming, 95% of the effort should be done before the reaper is brought in out of the barn. That's ridiculous of driving those combines. I've seen that happen. Going to Washington, D.C., they think they can shake things up. You know, tractors. Do you remember that? March on Washington. But you, you wouldn't think of taking that. By the way, most of those machines, you know how much are they? Almost a half a million dollars just to buy those car, those machines. But you wouldn't think of taking them out with nothing out there. But yet we bring in our big reavers. You know, Mark Finley... I don't know what, Mark Finley, he would not bring the reaper in, the good reaper, not the death reaper, but the good one, <laughs> until he did his work previously. Bible study something where you're building people, bringing people in that you get to know. 
before the reaper. Even farmers checks to see if the when the harvest is ready. Reaping meetings, aftermath. So notice there's two types of churches, the church-centered, people-centered. Church-centered evangelism is building up the church, adding members to the church. That's all they think of. But people said shapes ministry, ministries to people's needs and offers a love that has no, no ulterior motives, no hidden agenda. That's what you got to operate on. I like this one. Cheap people. Feed those who are hungry, hungry not just for potatoes and carrots, but for love. People are starved for love. Am I not right? Am I not right? You look what's happening Saturday night in a church, then you know how much relationships we have because most people are bored stiff. She people quench people's thirst for acceptance and a listening ear. Jesus' point here is that this is the goats, that they are no matter what, uh, it's that it should not matter all who the, who the goats are loving. Nothing else should matter except for someone who is in need. That's what you're looking for in the sheep and the goats. The so last one is healing. Healing. God depends on a team and every member's part he is what's equally important. There's not one person in this one that does not have talent, but all of us are considered equal in the sight of God. God uses many Christians over many years to bring persons to the point where he or she is interested in spiritual things. God is working way ahead of you. You just have to ask, what is God wanting with him, wanting with from you right now? What for them? What are they asking you for? That's what you got to look for. And you can't see this, but there's a, it's a spiritual chart. Some of you might be able to. But people around us are in stages all along their own spiritual interests. Like the first one, it says, help to start a car. Baby set for free. So this is on the clear on this side. That's the zero interest. But you move them to 100%. And we'll talk about that when we come to the other end. Give a ride to kids. That's helping. It's interesting, I had a, I've been mowing lawns, even the neighbor's lawns in my, my, my yard. So I mow the neighbors. This week a neighbor came out and he, um, there was a guy next door who was selling his house. And this is a crazy house, Brian, that they want so much money for, it's crazy. Selfish, it's just selfish, I just can't believe it. Anyway, I'm not gonna stop. But anyway, my neighbor across the alley watched me mow this guy's yard for two years and I didn't ask anything from it. He wasn't living there, but he's selling that thing. So just this week, he said, he came, he, now my neighbor across the yard, he's, he's a uh, surveyor. So he decided that I was working too much. So he decided to go out with his survey thing and find out where those markers are at, you know, my property markers. So he found them, he dug them up, showed the neighbors, this is where you need to be mowing. I thought that was nice. Someone would listen to me finally. But I mean, I gave up mowing this whole yard, but I still may move up to his, gar his uh, garage. But I mean, I thought that was nice. That was very nice. Because he knew what I was doing. But I don't mind it. I don't mind it. So I kind of like yard work. But that's why I just mowing his lawn. But I'm looking for that one word. I'm looking for something spiritual coming out of this one. So I'm, I'm working my neighborhood, say my neighbors. But it takes time. You just can't get somebody overnight. All right, so I got to keep going here. Listening to, listening to troubles, that's now you're getting closer. Share Bible studies, promises. Accept Christ, then ask them to join your church. We'll talk about that down the way. But that, that's so important. You look at these spiritual lines. You got to watch where God's moving these people. All right, so they're on different stages. 
that God's spirit that moves them along the line from left to right. See, I learned this from Joel Tompkins. He was a good buddy of mine, good president. But he says, find out what God is telling, moving upon these people by asking the right question. The tool he uses is our love. Spiritual interest line is made of many individuals along infinite links until it becomes a long chain. Our job is to become sensitive to the work of the Holy Spirit and discover what ministry next link should be from running Christ, running errands to sharing about Jesus. He takes many different, different people over this is chain. All right, here we come. God asks us to minister to non animals primarily not from benefit, but for ours. That brings the healing. I want you to come with me in your Bible just to get this so you can have some search. Go with me to Isaiah 58, my favorite chapter in the whole Bible. Isaiah 58. All right. These are dealing with two different fasts. Isaiah 58, verse 3. Why have we fasted, they said, and have not seen you, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls? You don't take any notice, God. This is the people are speaking to God. In fact, the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You exploit your labors. Instead, you fast for what? Strife and debate, to strike with the fist of wickedness. The problem with many of our churches is that we're fighting inside it. We're bickering among ourselves. Is this not the fast I've told you? This is, you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is this the fast I've chosen you for a man to afflict his soul, to bow his head, this is humility, like a head, like a bull rush, to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day of God? Is this not the fast I've chosen? Notice verse 6. Now watch this one. To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread to the hungry? And Valley, I don't really like you do with the Methodist church. I think that's a great calling. When you see the naked, that you cover him, that you hide not your own self from your own flesh, that's your family. Then, notice verse 9, 8. Then shall your light break forth this morning, and your what? Healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. And the glory of the Lord be your guard. I want to take you this. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, for your own pleasure on finding doing your own pleasure on, on my holy day, and call the Sabbath delight, holy and honorable, you shall and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, etc., nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I'll cause you to write in heart your high place. That's the high. That's the high. You see the difference between the two paths? Ministry to non animus is one of God's primary tools that he makes to us to make us like himself. Now, I'm just going to show you this. This is just a quick gathering here, but the first thing we do is awareness of that. What do we do outside the gates of our walls that make people think that we're friendly? You're never getting to those gates unless you do, number one, awareness of that. And I think your garage sale was an awareness of that. I think that's a great thing you did. All right, so then the next one, if I can get it, is entry events. And we'll talk about that when we go on. And you got pathways, getting them moving to the church, then decision making, then you train, and finally you assimilate, put them to work. All right, let me give you that what that means. I'm just about close here. Awareness events are programs to take into individuals to the, of the community. That's the awareness event. You're not meeting, you're going outside your walls. These programs include anything that will make people aware of who you are. Entry event is, is a program, Adventist church, to which people of the community come to because they have met their felt needs, like stop smoking or drugs or, see what I mean? It's, they, want, they need this and they're coming to you for questions, but you've had to do awareness event before. Pathways are people met their felt needs, 
what they're feeling, not what you think they should be, ongoing in order for these pathways to, of them to interest them. Pathways are church oriented, going on the contact in, with individuals. Now, I'm closing right in here. I want to have three more slides. You can't see this, but I want you to notice all this is Iowa. You see that? You can see that there, can't you? These are co ads. Co ad is community, organized, active in disasters. That's what we got to be involved in. Now, you'll see these colors schemes throughout there. You, you see the white ones, they don't, they don't have the co ad. Long term recovery committee is the first one to work. But all those spots that you see there, our churches, the yellow, do you see those yellow things, bars like? The red ones where the pastors live. I'm going to show you that. This is, this, this is very al alarming. There's over 3 million Iowa people. 3 million. Now watch this progression. There's about 3,500 members in Iowa, Adventists. 3.5 million, and you only have 3,500 Adventists? There are only 43 churches in Iowa. This is back in about four, three, four years ago. Now get this. You want the pastors to be the heroes. You want them to win all the souls. Guess how many pastors are in Iowa? For these 3.5 million, 15. And you expect the pastors to win the day so we can go home to heaven. That's what you're expecting. While you guys sit back and say, go for it, pastor, go for it. Isn't that sobering? Why isn't Adventist growing? I'm telling you why. It's what we're seeing here. But how committed are you? And I'm going to bite my lip on that one. All right. Closing. God could have reached his object in saving sin without, any, without our aid. But in order for us to develop character like Christ, we must share in his work. We'll talk about working together. Here's your prayer. Humble yourselves. He will hear you and heal you. I'm going to take you through this prayer. What's the, what's the commitment on this one? If my people who are called by my name will what? Humble themselves. That's the first thing. And then what? And pray. And then what? Seek my face. And turn from the wicked ways. Now, by the way, you can never turn from your wicked ways unless you humble yourself, unless you pray, unless you seek his face. Because I like seeking Jesus' face. He doesn't scold me. He corrects you. But he doesn't scold you and say, get lost. I'll deal with you when you make it right. He doesn't do that. Just a second. All right. But notice what to do. Then, well, I hear. Say, forgive my sins and I'll heal their land. 